Where am I going and why am I going there? What am I actually trying to find? That is one of the biggest questions with Uranus in the, in the ninth house. What are you actually trying to find? What do you do with the energy? What do you do with that is shown to you, potentially? Are you using it for your good, for your growth, for your evolution, or are you going to go down with it? It is up to you. Good morning, my loves. Welcome back. So today we are talking about Uranus. Uranus is one of the last planets this year, and I said one of them because it's not the last, but it's one of the last planets this year to start its retrograde cycle. And let me just... This is not... Vibing. It starts its retrograde cycle on September 1st, 2024, and it will stay in retrograde until January 13th, 2025. So quite a while. Uranus's life cycle is 84 years. That means it takes Uranus 84 years to go around the zodiac. Now we have to look at Uranus's role, right? And when I say Uranus's role, what I mean is, what is Uranus trying to teach us? The Uranus energy around us and within us, because we all have it within us. What is that energy trying to teach us? Uranus is the liberator. It brings surprises. It yearns for freedom. It brings innovation. It is related to Aquarius, right? It's the modern rule of Aquarius. It was discovered during the time during a time of revolution on this planet. Remember, we had the American Revolution and we had the French Revolution and Uranus was discovered during that time. Again, when it comes to what Uranus wants to teach us, it wants to basically free us from the shackles. Remember, Uranus is the first planet outside the bounds of Saturn. What is Saturn? The bounds of this 3D reality. Uranus sits on the other side and says, well, you're still connected to other realms. Remember, you're connected to other realms. It is the first indicator that tells us, remember the divine within you. Remember the divine within you, right? It's like that echoing. Remember the divine within you. You are still connected to it. Don't forget it. Remember your connection to the divine. Remember your intuitive knowing. And when Uranus goes retrograde, all of this, we will feel on steroids. We will be reminded to reconnect to that intuitive knowing. And we will most likely be reminded in ways that might not feel so pleasant at first, but we often need that. When we are in the daily grind, we often forget that, right? We are just doing the thing we know we have to do and then we do it again and the next day we do it again. And Uranus in retrograde specifically, I mean, Uranus always, always wants to remind us on that, but specifically the retrograde Uranus, it, it, it hones in on it, right? It hones in. It wants you to go deeper also. Uranus in retrograde is asking you, where are you still lying to yourself? and or others about something in your life. Where are you not authentic? Because Uranus wants you to be authentic, as authentic as you can be in this 3D reality, right? And remember the connection to the divine, the connection to the divine, where are you not connected? That is what Uranus will hone in on in the coming six months. Is it six months, five months, six months? Uh, September, October, November, December, January, five months. So the Uranus retrograde is generally a breakdown or a breakthrough. <laughs> you can choose. And I, I mean that when I say that, you can choose. Because you decide what to do with the energy that is presented to you, always. That is the beauty, right? When we look at a chart, we see the potential. This is the energy. It can unfold in this direction, in that direction, in that direction, or that direction, or whatever direction. 
you decide which direction it will unfold into. What do you do with the energy? What do you do with the shit show that is shown to you, potentially? Are you using it for your good, for your growth, for your evolution, or are you going to go down with it? It is up to you. It sounds always easier than it actually is. I know. I'm living this life too. I know it always, it always sounds easier when you say it than when you feel it and go through it. Because then you're just like, oh, what is going on? Because it often is a visceral experience, right? Because we live on this planet in this human body that, you know, where we feel things, we feel it, it's visceral. So, however, Uranus, Uranus's mission, Uranus's energy is change or die. And when I say die, I'm not talking about literal death. I'm talking about, you know, you not fully living. You not fully living authentically being authentically you. So as you know, Uranus is in Taurus right now and Uranus in Taurus works. Um, <laughs> Uranus in Taurus, I, I actually really like Uranus in Taurus, even though it is supposed to be very difficult here. I like it because it really makes us be more authentic when it comes to what we truly desire in life. Uranus says, what do you truly desire? Why are you holding back? Why are you playing small? Why are you not true to yourself? Why do you not allow yourself to have it, right? We are working on the worthiness stuff, the values. What are your values? Are you adhering to your values? Or are you pretending uh, to, to have these values? When really, you know, they are your parents' values that you took on, or your friends' values, or society's values. What are your values? Uranus wants you to be authentic, remember. And then, of course, also Uranus in, um, in, in Taurus on a societal level brings innovation, like food innovation, uh, but also innovation on, on, the very, on a very mundane level. AI came out during Uranus in Taurus, making jobs easier. Of course, there's also the other side that we can look at, right? It makes it easier, but in certain regards, it makes it harder. People will lose their jobs because there are jobs that can now be done by AI. But we're not talking about this because in this channel, we are talking about you. We are talking about what you can learn, what you individually can learn, and what you individually need to shift, change, and rearrange to flourish in life. So let's get into the signs. Aries and Aries rising. For you, this energy is going to unfold or is unfolding in the second house. This is all about worth and value, your innate worthiness, how rooted are you in that, and uh, where are you still playing small, where are you not true to yourself, what you truly want to achieve in life, where you, uh, where you truly want to go, you know, the finances that you truly want to have, where are you not allowing yourself that, where are you holding back, where are you playing someone else's game and not yours? Taurus, Taurus rising. For you, this energy is unfolding in the first house, life direction. Are you going into the direction that you want to go? Are you going towards your goals or are you going towards something that um, you think you should do or go to towards? Where are you going? Are you authentic? in expressing yourself or is your facade really just a facade? How connected is that facade, what you present to the world with what you truly feel and know to be true and want for your life? This, is, uh, this has probably not been an easy one for you, Taurus. Like you've been going through the emotions. You've been probably going through a lot of shifts, quite a lot of identity shifts. You thought like, okay, now I'm here. This is me. Oof, there was another layer, right? You gotta, there's layers and layers uh, of stuff that you are taking off right now to get to that authentic you that then shows up in the way, in, in form of 
This is where I'm going. This is what I want. This is how I authentically approach life. Because that's the question here. Are you authentically, authentically approaching your life? Gemini, Gemini rising. For you, this energy is showing up in the 12th house. So we are talking um, your spiritual life. So uh, you've been probably going through a deep spiritual cleansing and, you know, shipping away on the layers, trying to understand who you are now, what, what, uh, what spirituality means, like connecting to that spiritual part of you, that intuitive knowing, that, that connection to the divine, right? That Uranus wants you to be connected to. And you've probably been going through a few layers thinking, okay, this is it. And you realize, oh, no, 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 there's another layer. And then this is it. Oh, mm -mm, next, this is it. So we are, you know, we're not finished. You're just not finished with your 12th house yet. So there are probably going to be another few layers you are taking off. But no, and remember, you need to understand each layer first before you can get to the next. So work through those layers and stay connected to the layer you are in. Work through that layer to get to the next layer. And this is, I understand, this is a very elusive kind of uh, explanation here, uh, a description of, of what Uranus in the 12th house means. But the 12th house is elusive. The 12th house is Neptunian. It is really hard to understand because it is really detached from that world that we live in, that material world, because it's not material. It's our true deep connection to the divine. Cancer, cancer raising. For you, this is a 12th house transit. Uh, this is 11th house transit. Now we are talking about your hopes and dreams for your future, the future of you, the generations that come after you, but also your connection to your community, your friendship circle. You are, you probably have been going through lots of shifts and changes in this area. I'm just not understanding. Are you still belonging to this circle of friends? Are you not? You know, there is like a back and forth. Yeah, of course they are my friends. They've always been my friends, but are they, you know, have I outgrown this? What do I need to shift and change? Where am I not authentic relating to these people? Also, where I'm not authentically relating to my future, what I actually want for my future where I actually want to go, what I actually want to experience, what I actually want to leave behind, what I actually want to give back to the people, all the people, but specifically the people that come after you, the generations after you, your children, right? Remember the 11th house is connected to the fifth house, the fifth house, house of children. So legacy, this might also be a back and forth uh, when it comes to children. Right, maybe you, if you already have children, there might have been a lot of ups and downs. If you don't have children yet, maybe for you, this is like, okay, well, I don't have children. What is my legacy? Can I still have children? Do I still want children? What, what's going on there? And remember, Uranus retrograde will hone in deeper. Now, Leo, Leo rising. For you, this is a 10th house a transit, aspirations, your life's purpose. Uh, this has probably been an ongoing topic, really. You've probably advanced a lot in the past five years in this area. It doesn't mean that you upgraded your job always, but your understanding of what your aspirations actually are has grown and you're more authentic. You're chipping away on those layers, like what, what is actually your purpose? And uh, like I uh, explained earlier for other signs, there's always another layer, right? When you put Uranus chipping away on the layers. So you go through one layer and you think, oh, this is, this is now the purpose. Like I think I'm honing in on it, but you know, you're going through this and you realize, Ooh, there's another layer, but you have to go through that one layer first fully to get to the other layer. So Uranus is now like, is probably, especially in your professional life, chipping away on that and saying, okay, well, what do you really want? What are your true aspirations? Your true aspirations, your true purpose. Authentically you, not like from an ego kind of, yeah, I'd like this and I'd like to make that much money and I'd like to be the CEO of this and that and that and that. that's all good. You, you, you should have all of that. 
But what is authentic? What what is underneath that? What is truly underneath that? Uranus in retrograde wants to hone in on that on a deeper level. Then uh, Virgo Virgo rising for you. This is a ninth house transit. Well, uh, this can relate to. Um, a few different things. We can look at it from the perspective of honing in on uh, travel. Honing in on travel meaning, I'll give you an example of my life. I'm a Virgo rising. I've traveled all through my 20s, most of my 30s. And then all of a sudden in 2018, I slowed down. And I didn't realize I slowed down, really. And then I really slowed down, of course, when COVID came. COVID happened. Because, well, you know, I didn't really have an option, but, but listen to this. During COVID, I was moving countries. I was actually moving to a different country uh, during uh, COVID, which is quite interesting. But then I was just staying put, right? I wasn't moving. And every time I traveled, something happened. Every time I went on a summer holiday. So, and I was like, what is going on? What is not right here? What is, where am I not true to myself here? Why, why am I actually traveling? Where am I going and why am I going there? What am I actually trying to find? And that is one of the biggest questions with Uranus in the, in the ninth house. What are you actually trying to find? What are you actually wanting to explore? Where are you trying to get to? Also belief systems, right? Belief system is part of the, the, uh, the ninth house philosophy and all of that. What I, for me, I could not have seen that coming, what Uranus brought here. Like my belief system just, Uranus put it upside down and then back and then to the other side again. There's a lie for me when it comes to my belief system before COVID and after COVID. And it, it doesn't have necessarily have to do with COVID in, it, in itself, right? But just that time, what I've went through, the, the, the way I spent my time literally in isolation in the countryside for a year on my own, not speaking to a soul unless it was online. Um, it was very interesting the way I, it actually opened my mind. And I came out of that as a different person. And I'm obviously, Jonas is still there, right? We are still working on that. And I still discover new things, new ideas that I'm like, wow, I'm better integrating this because this is good. This feels like me. So I'm getting to know myself better in a foreign country, quite literally, because I'm living in a foreign country. Um, well, I've been living in foreign countries for the past 25 years, but you know, it's, it's, it's very foreign because I'm not speak, even speaking the language yet. So I'm learning, I'm trying to learn. But there is, um, yeah, Uranus is really trying to help me hone in on that, right? Where um, the question of like exploration, expanding my mind, expanding my horizon in a different country, quite literally. And all the surprises that, that come with it. Also, there was an interesting thing uh, that came in during this time was uh, religions. Um, I'm a very spiritual person, but I'm not necessarily a religious person. Uh, but I uh, got in touch or was brought into a religion through a relationship that um, I wasn't really uh, in touch with before. And that was very interesting what that did with me and how that helped me open my mind not necessarily to religion, but to understanding religions in general better and understanding it, what it means for me and, you know, how I, how I utilize it, how I use it, how I um, interact with it on a more authentic level, more authentic for me. Then uh, what's, what's next? Libra, Libra rising for you. This is the eighth house while well, Uranus taking you down the rabbit hole. And every time you think, oh, now, now I've got it. Now I've got it. I am good, Uranus. I'm good. Watch out because Uranus is going retrograde and Uranus is going to take you down the rabbit hole once again on a much deeper level and probably bring up surprising, surprising stuff that 
not necessarily that you didn't know about, but you might not have wanted to actually look there because you're like, okay, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine now. I'm getting this. I'm getting this part of like my conditioning. I've unconditioned here. I've unconditioned there. But there's, like I said, always another layer. And Uranus is really helpful uh, in uncovering the layers, especially in the eighth house when it comes to your worth and value, other people's money. What, how do you feel about other people's money? Are you really rooted, rooted, deeply rooted in your worth and values, your innate worthiness? How, how deeply rooted are you in that? Or is it still just a mental concept that you kind of play with? But are you really deeply rooted on a visceral level? Scorpio, Scorpio rising. Well, my lovely Scorpios, what can I say? We are in the seventh house. I know it's not been easy for you. It's not been easy. Uranus brought out the big guns. What is happening with the relationship you're in? Are you still in it? Or is it already another one in the next round? Like Uranus really just opened the floodgates and pushed, really pushed the boundaries in relationship because Uranus wants you to be authentic in your relationship. Feel like yourself in the relationship. Can you be yourself in your relationship? And if not, what needs to shift and change? Uranus will not leave anyone, any Scorpio rising that isn't authentic in the relationship to be and stay in this relationship. That is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Evolve or die, right? Like that's the idea here. Be authentic in your relationship, whatever it takes. Maybe you have to go to therapy. Maybe you have to do whatever you have to do. Or maybe this is not working, right? But Uranus will show you that. Uranus wants you to be authentic in your relationships. Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising. For you, this is a sixth house transit, health and routine. How are your routines helping you to stay healthy, to be healthy? Again, with Uranus, everything comes in layers, right? Like Uranus works through one layer first and you think, okay, I'm, I'm authentic now. I know, I know I'm like, I'm a vegan now. Or... I'm a vegetarian, whatever. Oh, are you? <laughs> okay. Work with it and see if this is truly you. Right? It's like, what, what needs to shift and change in this area? How do you need to live to live authentically? And again, authentically, it's something that is connecting you to the divine. It's not just connecting you to the 3D. You will have to work with the divine. Uranus is on the other side, right? It's outside the bounds of Saturn. So you need to connect to that, but you still need to live on this planet, right? You cannot forget that. You cannot forget, you can't just take off. You, you know, like being totally detached from living on this planet. You still have to live on this planet. What does that mean for you? And how can you bring the two together? Capricorn, Capricorn rising. For you, this is a fifth house transit. Now we are talking, well, love, creative self-expression. And when I say love, by the way, I'm not just talking about this fluffy kind of, this is part of it, but love, being connected to the divine love, that love that always is. You know, not that love that, you know, you fall in love and it's all nice and then it turns ugly. Not, not that kind of love, like that love, the true love for your life, for yourself, for what you came here to express, right? Creative self-expression. What does that mean? What does it mean to be authentically you expressing yourself as you? Authentically. 
What do you do? How do you behave? How do you act? How do you show up? How do you interact? Aquarius, Aquarius rising. For you, my lovely Aquarius, this is a fourth house transit. So really shifting and changing your personal life, turning your personal life upside down, quite literally. And this, this can relate to your family, your ancestry, right? Your, your ancestry line. This can relate to your current relationship, the family that you've created. This can relate to your home. You know, how, what does it mean to, what does home mean to you? How do you want to live? Like, I'll give you an example. This is just one example of how this can turn out, right? You live in an apartment, a nice little apartment, nice little neighborhood, but you, you want to live in a house in the countryside. That would be you. That would be you authentically. But you have like all these reasons why you can't. Well, your partner needs to work in the city because blah, blah, blah. Your kids need to go to this school, blah, blah, blah. You cannot afford it, right? That's probably for most people, that is a valid reason, right? But is that really true? Can you not find a solution for that? Uranus will push you there. It will push you. Pisces, Pisces rising, for you, this is a third house transit. We are talking about your um, immediate surrounding, your social circle, your social life. How social are you? Are you social at all? Are you out there in the world? Are you connecting with the people that you actually want to connect with? Or are you connecting with people that you have nothing in common with? Also, relating to your immediate family, your siblings, your aunts, your uncles. What's the connection there? Is it you know, are you authentically connecting or are you just, uh, you know, pretending because, you know, it's family, so you have to behave a certain way. Also, education, basic education and early life conditioning. This is a big one in this area that we often overlook. Uranus most likely brings things back up from the past that, uh, you know, have made you into a person that is not really authentic. Because... Uranus wants you to be authentic. So what do you need to shift and change? What do you need to release and let go from the past to be more authentic, live more authentically? And with that, my loves, I will love you and leave you. If you have any questions about this transit, please feel free to ask down in the comment section. If you want a personal reading, feel free to book it by clicking on the link in the description box and uh yeah anything else i'm here for you ask away and i will see you in the next video